First goal Portsmouth had conceded. It was goodbye to Milan Mandaric as he resigned as Pompey's chairman after eight years at the helm. A new era was also beginning at Aston Villa as American businessman Randy Lerner bought out Doug Ellis. In came Nigerian Obafemi Martins, a £10 million signing from Inter Milan. There's not going to be a new Shearer. There's only one Shearer. Ober Martins will be his, his own player. But what he must do is, um, in his own way, is, is score the, the number of goals that Owen did. Martin showed his predatory instinct with his first goal for the club in a 2 0 win at West Ham. It was the Magpies' only win in September as they lost against Fulham and Liverpool. Xavi Alonso's speculative effort must have given goalkeeper Steve Harper nightmares. Still looking for their first win, Sheffield United passed up a golden opportunity against Blackburn when they missed two penalties. Amazingly, United's Paddy Kenny saved a Benny McCarthy penalty in the same match and both sides settled for a goalless draw. Against Reading, the Blades were caught napping as Kevin Doyle raced through to score the quickest goal of the season. 16 seconds. To lose a goal after 16 seconds is a, really a disgrace, really, at this level. Warnock side finally recorded their first victory at the seventh attempt. They left it late against Middlesbrough. Phil Jagielka's 90th minute goal, securing a 2-1 win. That victory was enough to move the Blades off the bottom of the table. The champions Chelsea were sitting top, but both Manchester United and Portsmouth had a game in hand. Reading's Steve Koppel was voted Manager of the Month, and Andrew Johnson picked up the Player Award. Arsenal's Robin Van Persie scored a wonder goal against Charlton. Flashpoint as Chelsea visited Reading, a story of two keepers. Petr Cech's accidental clash with Stephen Hunt after just 20 seconds resulted in a fractured skull for the Czech Republic international. With two minutes to go, Czech's replacement Carlo Cudicini was also stretched off after colliding with Ibrahima Sonko. John Terry took over goalkeeping duties as the champions who'd gone ahead courtesy of an Inge Marsen own goal held on for all three points. A 2-1 win over Portsmouth, a Iranian striker with his first in seven games. It was also Balak's first league goal for the club. Chelsea's stay at the summit lasted less than 24 hours as Manchester United defeated Liverpool 2-0 to regain the top spot. Paul Scholes celebrated his 500th appearance for United with goal number 132. It was Bolton at the Reebok next for United. Wayne Rooney celebrated his 22nd birthday in style, scoring the season's first hat-trick and ending an eighth. Two wins for Bolton in October, including a 1-0 victory over Blackburn. That was mainly thanks to their goalkeeper, Yusi Jaskalainen. First, he saved Benny McCarthy's 87th minute penalty, and then two minutes later, repeated the feat, saving from Jason Roberts. Not even Stuart Pearce's lucky mascot, Beanie, could help Manchester City as they slumped to a 4-0 defeat away at Wigan. With two wins from nine games, the going was far from good for City. And Beanie lost his job. Game of the month came on a warm Monday night at Vicarage Road. Watford were still looking for their first league victory. The visitors Fulham had already enjoyed a memorable win away from home at Newcastle the previous month. Three points looked to be in the bag as Watford opened up a 2-0 lead through Marlon King and Ashley Young. But Fulham pulled a goal back through Brian McBride. A 
And then, with just seven minutes left, Heider Haugesson equalised against his former club. Fulham thought they'd completed a great turnaround when Damien Francis scored an own goal with just three minutes left. But Watford snatched a share of the spoils in the final minute. Young on target again to complete a pulsating game. It finished 3-3. felt that were a uh, special shock, you know, because I felt uh, there is something more here uh, when you are in the stand. Uh, I felt, I don't know why, that where football has been created and that I, I'm where at, at the roots of what I love, you know, and as well there was a special link between the fans and their team that doesn't exist anywhere else. The Gunners moved up from 8th place to 5th in the table after two wins and a draw. The highlight, a 4-0 drubbing of Reading at the Medeski. The Gunners' biggest win of the season to date. More good news came with Colo Torre and Cesc Fabregas, both signing new contracts. Manchester United and Chelsea were neck and neck on 25 points after the first 10 games. While at the bottom, Newcastle were just two points off a place in the relegation zone. Sir Alex Ferguson and Paul Scholes were named manager and player of the month, respectively. And defender Rio Ferdinand showed his eye for goal with a fine strike against Liverpool. No signs of wanting to quit. The way I do my job, obviously, I think... It that will come to an end, uh, this club, but when I leave, um, I've been involved in all the club. And that's the way it's been here, and it won't change whilst I'm here. There was a potential shock on the cards at Bramall Lane when Sheffield United took a 1-0 lead through former Old Trafford star Keith Gillespie. But Wayne Rooney, who'd signed the new two-year contract extension, scored twice as United came from behind to win 2-1. Now came the clash of the big two, arch-rivals Chelsea denying Ferguson maximum points in November. United scored first through Luis Sahar. But Ricardo Carvalho equalised. Still, with 13 points from a possible 15, it was a very productive month for United. Tottenham had great expectations for their season. A huge slice of the £18 million they received for Michael Carrick went on the Bulgarian international striker Dimitar Berbatov, a £10.9 million capture from Bayer Leverkusen. But Martin Yol's policy of rotating his front line was having a detrimental effect. Heading into November, their strike force of Berbatov, Robbie Keane, Mido and Jermaine Defoe had scored just three league goals between them. The problem is you've got four strikers you want to play every week and... It's always going to be a problem. Every striker wants to play and every player wants to play, but that's something that we have to accept and whether we like it or not. When Chelsea rolled into White Hart Lane, it was left to defender Michael Dawson and winger Aaron Lennon to secure Tottenham's first league win over their London rivals in 16 years. It finished 2-1, but Spurs could only manage four points from their next three games to end the month 11th in the table. Chelsea bounced back from their defeat at Spurs by thrashing Watford 4-0, with Didier Drogba helping himself to a hat-trick. The Ivory Coast striker also signed a new four-year contract to stay at Stamford Bridge. Bolton had set out their ambitions for the season with an £8 million outlay for striker Nicolas Analka, despite the Frenchman's reputation as the incredible sulk. The former Arsenal star came back to haunt his old club with a double strike in Bolton's 3-1 victory at the Reebok. Too many draws, but Arsenal remained undefeated at the Emirates. The highlight in November, a 3-0 win over Liverpool, which lifted them up to third in the table and left Steven Gerrard and John Arnorisa at loggerheads. But it had been a different story earlier in the month at Upton Park for Wenger and his team. An 89th minute goal for Marlon Harewood gave West Ham a shock 1-0 win. Their first over the Gunners at Upton Park since 1999. 
It was all too much for the previously unflappable Monsieur Wenger, who took offence at Alan Pardew's celebrations, a reaction that earned the Frenchman a £10,000 fine from the FA. West Ham continued to hog the headlines with a takeover of the club by Icelandic biscuit baron Egget Magnusson, apparently an Alan Pardew fan. I think he has done great things with uh, West Ham, you know, uh, looking at last season, uh, a great year, you know, and uh, I fully believe that uh, he will uh, help me take West Ham to the next stage. Things hadn't gone so well for former Hammer Ian Dowie at Charlton. After just 15 games in charge, Dowie was shown the door. If you're changing things around, then you have to have results to, to, to make people believe in it. So that's what I've tried, and tried to do, is, 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 is be very player-focused. But that's been also tested because the results haven't come. Despite the club languishing at the bottom of the table, the board opted for continuity. Dowie's assistant manager, Les Reeve, was the surprise choice to engineer Charlton's revival. Glenn Roder was starting to feel the pressure with his Newcastle team still struggling to get away from the wrong end of the standings. While at the top, Manchester United and Chelsea had opened a gap. Steve Koppel won his second award of the season and Cristiano Ronaldo was voted player of the month. While the pundits were running out of superlatives for Nicholas Anelka's goal against his former club. This programme is sponsored by Bet365. Bolton star Gary Speed made history in December. Against West Ham, he became the first player to make 500 Premier League appearances.